This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. So last week, the big news was that Apple had announced a few new products. And this week, those products began to ship to consumers and we were able to go hands-on with some of those products and made separate videos for each one to give you a deeper dive. I'll run through some of them briefly, but all of the links to those videos can be found down in the description below and in the card in the upper right-hand corner. The iPad Pro was first to come in, but before that, we went hands-on with the new Smart Keyboard Folio. And to sum that one up, it's slightly darker in color and has an Apple logo on it now, and is still, at this moment, the only keyboard case that you can get from Apple to pair with the new 2020 iPad Pro. Hopefully, manufacturing stays on track and the new Magic Keyboard that was announced last week for the iPad Pro will begin to ship in May as expected. The iPad Pro itself is a minor upgrade for those who own the 2018 model, but for everyone else, no matter what iPad you own, it should seem like a pretty large upgrade, at least in my opinion. Check out our full hands-on again for more information on that product. Then yesterday we went hands-on with the new MacBook Air, and again, theme is a small upgrade for the most part for those of you who own a 2018 MacBook Air or a 2019 model, but for everyone else, massive upgrade. This year's MacBook Air features the new Scissor Switch Magic Keyboard that Apple started implementing in its machine starting with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And finally, iOS and iPadOS 13.4 was officially released this past week. And again, there is an entire video highlighting all of the features on our channel already, but one of the bigger features was the official cursor support for that iPad. And spoiler alert, yes, we made a video directly focusing in on the iPad cursor support. During our 13.4 video, however, we mentioned a potential new feature called Car Key. And this week we uncovered some more information about that new feature. Car Key will allow users to approach their vehicles, hold their iPhone or Apple Watch near an NFC reader that's already inside their vehicle, and authenticate with Face ID. And you'll have the vehicle unlock automatically. This would be similar to Apple Pay at transit turnstiles. Express mode would also be an option, eliminating the need to authenticate with Face ID or a passcode. Earlier this week, screenshots of what appears to be the car key interface surfaced on Twitter, providing us with our first look at the upcoming feature. As expected, a digital car key appears as a card in the wallet app. Tapping on the card reveals info such as the car model, issuing automaker, a toggle switch for express mode, and an option to share a car key with other users. When you share a car key, the primary user can provide others with three levels of access, including the ability to unlock the trunk only, unlock the vehicle, or unlock the vehicle and drive it. It's unclear exactly when this feature might be available, but looking forward to seeing what other car companies will be on board if and when it does launch. Apple this week also acknowledged that MacBook Air models with retina displays can exhibit anti-reflective coding issues as indicated in a memo shared with Apple authorized service providers. Apple's internal service documentation for this issue previously only mentioned MacBook Pro and discontinued 12-inch MacBook models with retina displays, but the MacBook Air is now mentioned in at least two places. Apple added a retina display to the MacBook Air in October of 2018, and all models of the notebook have featured one since. Apple has a free repair program for the anti-reflective coding issue in place internally, but it has yet to add any MacBook Air models to the list of eligible models. And hopefully for those of you who just purchased the 2020 model, this does not become an issue. And hopefully Apple adds the MacBook Air to its repair program. So last week we talked about how Apple is still planning to launch its upcoming iPhone 12 this fall, but a new report suggests that Apple is now planning to delay the launch by months. Apple has reportedly held internal discussions about the possibility of delaying the launch by months, quote unquote, over fears of how well iPhones would sell in the current situation. And supply chain sources also believe that practical hurdles could push back the launch date, which was scheduled again for this September. Hopefully things start to get back on track, not only for Apple, but for the rest of the world here in the next few months. But again, this is a possibility that we should be aware of. As far as Apple's retail stores go, as you might know, the company shut down all of its stores outside of China, but earlier this week, Apple informed employees that it plans to reopen its Apple retail stores starting in the first half of April, according to Bloomberg. 
Now, retail stores will not all reopen at once and will likely remain closed longer in areas with more widespread outbreaks. Now, for those of you who might have purchased a new product this week and you decided that you don't really like it and you wanna return it, you can still do that by mail, but it also looks like the company will accept returns 14 days after stores begin to reopen, according to Apple's website. For those of you who are stuck at home, which should be most of you, here are a few things to check out while under quarantine. For starters, Apple is offering free 90-day trials of its two most popular creative applications, Final Cut Pro 10 and Logic 10. So if you've ever had dreams of learning how to video edit or produce music, there is no time like the present to take advantage of this offer and give these very, very good programs a shot. The 90-day free trial for Final Cut Pro 10 is available right now, while the free trial for Logic Pro will be available in the next few days. The free trial options can be downloaded from Apple's dedicated websites for Final Cut Pro 10 and Logic Pro 10. If you're done playing Animal Crossing and you want to relive some of the best iOS classic games, Game Club just launched a family sharing feature for the price of one single $4.99 per month subscription. This means 12 players can take advantage of the over 100 Game Club titles that feature no ads or in-app purchases. Also, not quite a series that you can watch just yet, but Apple did release the trailer, which you can watch right now, for its new show, Defending Jacob. It will be available on Apple TV Plus starting on April 24th, and this trailer looks super good in my opinion. I am a sucker for shows like this, so I'm pretty excited to check it out when it's available. But that's it. These are our top stories for the week. I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Now, before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, Motion VFX. If you haven't heard of Motion VFX yet and you're a content creator, well, buckle up because your life is about to get a whole lot easier. You might have seen some fancy animations or graphics popping up throughout some of our videos, and as much as I would like to say that I created those beautiful transitions or animations myself, I technically did not. Work smarter, not harder, with over hundreds of different plugins and templates for Motion VFX. They are hands down the best resource for Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion plugins and templates. Installing a plugin is as easy as one click from the Motion VFX menu bar app, and customizing the plugins all takes place directly inside of Final Cut Pro. Just drag and drop your effect or transition into your timeline, and then edit from the inspector. It's that easy. If you want a recommendation on what plugins to check out, definitely start with the M Bundle Vlogger. These are the perfect set of resources for adding in some awesome intros, pop tags, social media animations, adding in pointers for tutorials, which is something that we do quite a bit, and much more. Honestly, I use these plugins every day, and they are a huge tool for helping me create content faster and easier. For more information about Motion VFX and the M Bundle Vlogger, click the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.